with T quotes and I'm here to do a viewers request video I think the viewers name is Sharita she wanted to know what is a pineapple block a pineapple tool by Jarlene Fitzgerald that I'll do another video on at some time in the future but I thought that I would do this one first let me show you what a pineapple block is and let me zoom out a little bit here I'm working on other projects so I've got other things laying in my work area but I just wanted to show you what a modified pineapple block is and this is what you can make with the technique that I'm going to show you and then I'm going to talk about how you can take this modified pineapple and turn it into a traditional pineapple or as traditional as it can get. This is the pineapple block that's made with Jolene Fitzgerald's tool. And what I didn't like is that when you sew this little corner in, you're just going to have a little bit showing. So what I actually did was add a bigger section. So instead of three pieces here, I just have two. And I will put a picture of Jolene's tool on the screen for you right here. As I said, today we're going to be working with a modified pineapple block. And then I'm going to show you how you can modify it if you want. So what I have here is actually two, two and a half inch squares. One is of a dark print and one is of a light print. On the back side of the dark print, I have drawn a line down the center, both horizontally and vertically and then also on both diagonals and so if I have a two and a half inch square I just put my one and a quarter inch line of my ruler here and then just drew a line and then just did corner to corner as well on the light square I just drew a line diagonally from corner to corner on this square and your remaining squares you just need to draw a line diagonally corner to corner and I will put up a list at the end of this video because I'm not sure what size squares we're going to need because I didn't write it down when I did this block I just made the block but for as I'm working I will be writing all of the square sizes down and you will have a list at the end and again note that I said the square sizes because everything with this technique is going to be made from a square so the next step and I'll turn it back on the blue side is that you want to sew a quarter inch seam around the entire block now for me since I'm chain piecing I just chain piece if I'm making more than one block I'll chain piece and go off but if you're only making one block you can just start sewing get down here if you've got a um, presser foot that will let you know when you're one quarter inch from the bottom you can just rotate it and then turn your piece under the needle and keep going down turn your piece under the needle go down turn your piece under the needle but again since I was making more than one of these so I could show you four blocks when I'm done I just chain piece the units and so I have all of those here I just did four of those just for this sample so now we're actually going to be working with the side of the block that only has the X and you are going to need some scissors because what you want to do is pull this apart and I try to fold on the fold line and then I put a little snip right in the middle and then I can open this up and cut on the line down to my stitching I don't want to cut through my stitching and notice that I have some scissors that have a pretty good point on it because I do want to get down into the corners but I'm just going to go ahead and cut all four
I say all four lines, it's really two lines, but I'm going to all four corners. Okay, now I will do this to my other three block pieces as well, but I just want to go ahead and show you the next step. When I get to the ironing station, I'm going to press this flat. And then once I press it flat, I'm going to finger press all of these pieces up all the way around. And this is something that I do want to use my iron not my wooden iron I do want some uh, heat when I press with this so I will go do this to all four of these and then I will be back I'm back with my units but I do want to back up a little bit because I forgot to answer Sharita's question about what is a pineapple block and I did show it at the intro but what I forgot to add was that the pineapple block is also a version of the log cabin quilt so I just wanted to make sure I got that into the video now, the other thing I want to talk about is once you press these seams open, you now have bias edges out here. And I'm sure you can kind of see where it's kind of cattywampus in the block. And because of that, I do like to square my blocks up before I go to the next step. Now, you don't have to square these blocks up. You can just cut a block to whatever random size this is. It's normally some offshoot of a size. It's about two and seven eighths of an inch, somewhere in that neighborhood. But what I like to do is just square them up to a block size that's easier for me to cut. And for these blocks, I am going to square this block up to two and three quarters. Because I don't want to lose a lot of sizing on my block. So I have a ruler that has like 16th markings. But I want to use my 8th marking. So I, the reason why I put the lines on the back is that I can use them so that I know that I'm square as I'm squaring up my blocks. So I want to put my 3 8 inch mark on this line here and on this line and make sure that it carries all the way through so I'm going to be cutting on those particular lines so make sure I get my eights where I want them and then I want to make sure that they're carried throughout the ruler and they are and I have very little to trim and I'm actually working around my camera here so now, once I cut those two, I can now, ju I just cut these two sides. Now I can rotate this 180 degrees. And now I can just square this up to two and three quarters of an inch. And again, I'm working around my camera here. And that is it. And the reason why I put the lines on the back is so when I'm squaring up, I know that everything is going to be square as I continue to build my block out. And that will make sure that my block units will match up when they're completed. So these are the ones that I have already trimmed. You can see those here. Now, the difference between the traditional pineapple and the modified pineapple is the center. When I sew this onto the next square, I am going to lose my points. Whereas on the traditional block in your square in the square, you have your points here and you have your points here. But I won't have those and I'm okay with that. I think it looks pretty cool either way. I have squared these to two and three quarters of an inch. So that means I just added a round of light. Now I need to add a round of darks and they need to be two and three quarters of an inch. So I need squares that are cut 
two and three quarters of an inch. And then on these squares, on the back side, I am going to draw a line diagonally from corner to corner, and then I'm going to stitch around all four sides again, and I'm going to do that same cutting process. So I'm going to go ahead and stitch these, and then I will show you them in progress. So I just want to show you what I've done is I drew my lines diagonally from corner to corner and then I used some scissors to clip it apart. So what I want to do is pull so that I'm not cutting through the front. I just want to cut through the square that I just added. So I make sure these lines are in the same position on both sides. Put just a very tiny snip. And then once I have the little slit in, I can go in and cut. And then I will go through and cut into all four corners. So I've already done that with this one. And then I take this to my pressing station. I set the seam. And then I press all of these open. Okay, once I've done that, I have a unit that looks like this. And so from this unit, I've got now my round one and my round two on, and I'm adding actually six rounds with this method. So now I want to square my block up again. My block is almost three and one quarter inches, and that's what I want to square it up to. So it's not going to be a lot of trimming on this. But I do want to make sure that it stays square. So I'm going to use the lines on the back. And I'm going to use my 1 and 5 eighths inch mark on my ruler to square this up. Sorry, I got to turn it this way. Whichever way has, whichever ends have the little points sticking up, that's the edge you actually want to trim. So I want to put my 1 and 5 eighths inch on these marks that are in the middle here that I have. So I've got 1 and 5 eighths there, and then 1 and 5 eighths there. And then I like to follow it all the way through the lines. That way I know that my unit is going to be square. Again, I told you I wasn't going to be trimming much off of this because it's almost three and a quarter at this point. So I'm now going to rotate it twice. And now I can just square up to three and a quarter. So here is my squared up unit and of course since I've squared this up to three and a quarter and my last round was a dark I now want to make my next round with a light and so I'll now add three and one quarter inch light squares onto this unit and then I will be drawing my diagonal lines before doing that and this process will continue so I will continue making this block I'm actually holding the camera but I finished all of my blocks and I just wanted to go back over and do a block review these two are your traditional pineapple blocks that I made with the Guileen Fitzgerald pineapple tool and I will do another video on this sometime in the future not anytime soon because I want to talk about this tool and give you some tips for working with it but the block on the left is the actual tool and that they tell you how to do it and then the block on the right I opted to leave this last little corner off because I felt like when it was sewn in that it was going to disappear and I can also in the future practice on this a little better as well and then this is my block on the right that is what I'm calling the modified pineapple because in the center here you have your points in your square in the square 
whereas over here it's kind of rounded so I call it a modified pineapple and I also made this one with all squares now I have eight rounds on this block but on this one I decided I wanted to stop at six because I'm actually trying to use my small scraps anything less than six inches also this is one of those blocks where it's quicker to do it with this method than over here on this block even if I had done six rounds I would have needed 25 pieces of fabric to finish this block whereas over here with six rounds I only needed seven pieces of fabric so I like getting a similar process without having to do all of the touching of a lot of different pieces of fabric also if you wanted to not have these corners be big and you wanted them to end up like this you could easily sew a size flip corner on your square any size you like and I just pinned one on because I'm not going to do that so I do plan to make a quilt with this so here are my four blocks that I'm just using for this video so that I can get it uploaded but I wanted to talk about fabric for this as well in this block I am just going to leave everything as is I'm going to actually put these blocks next to each other so there will not be any sashing but as a design choice you could reverse your pineapple say put the light in the middle and then the darks would go this way and your lights would go out and then you could alternate light dark light dark if you did half of your blocks one way and half your blocks the other way so you still have choices but for this one I'm just going to keep this first pineapple quilt simple I think I may make a series of these at some point so I'm going to be doing different things with them and as I do those particular journeys I will share them with you so I hope this video was very helpful for you thank you for watching don't forget to subscribe to my channel like this video and share with your friends I'll see you next time bye bye Thank you.